all of us financial. So basically, we are a startup in the Bay Area. Um, I come from a, a technology background, predominantly in consulting uh, with Capgemini and, and Oracle. Uh, worked worked all over the globe, um, and I'm now in the Bay Area. And there's five of us now that are basically uh, forming this company uh, with a lot of financial experience and really sort of looking at coming out with a new solution to investing uh, for retail investors in the US at the moment. So coming from that background of financial services, we we sort of feel that the retail investor doesn't really get a fair go uh, in terms of investing. There's a lot of uh, institutional investors that get access to a lot of products that you don't. And also as well, they get access to a lot of things before everybody else. And, and kind of the a lot of the money's taken out of the opportunity before the retail investor comes on board. So we're a fully operational trading platform on web and mobile. Uh, we kind of lead with mobile because nowadays it's kind of where it is and, and we look at our daily active users and that's where we see the market is. Um, we're doing things around like daily sentiment. So we think that investing shouldn't be a very singular affair as it always has been. And you know, getting into that collaborative feel and sharing information around where people think the markets are going to go, uh, where, do, you know, is the upcoming election in the US going to have an impact on the share market in the next couple of months and, and getting that collaborative feel around people joining in a community uh, and sharing information, uh, hopefully making you a, a much more informed investor. Um, and then on the other side to it, with the transparency side of things, we're, we're being 100% transparent on fees. So you can actually see on your dashboard uh, what your fees will be. And so moving more sort of, you know, technology and that's kind of the, the business side of things. So, you know, like I say, mobile first really is, a, is our play, but I put it on there just to show a bigger screen. Um, you know, very dynamic dashboard. Obviously, trading is a very chatty application. We have a lot of APIs that are running data in real time from market feeds, uh, both from news and from the markets, uh, you know, on price changes and, and corporate actions. And there's a lot of information that comes in. And, and people nowadays, you know, want all that information in a simple way and an easily consumable way. Um, and want a like for like experience from web to mobile. So we've been very conscious of that and we, you know, we obviously lead with that, um, but also trying to make it a, a sort of a different experience to what is a very traditional sort of almost Excel based approach um, to investing. So as a startup, you know, one of the, one of the key challenges you have, you know, and, and Mark mentioned it is how, you know, you've got to get to market as quick as possible before you run out of money um, and prove that the, what you're doing is right. And, and there is a market out there for what you're doing and people appreciate what you're doing and see value in what you're doing. Um, and obviously trying to do that in a very cost effective way. Um, and so, you know, obviously for us, cloud native was was the only way to go. We we had no plans on on building infrastructure, and and I'm a firm believer in serverless uh, approaches. And I think we we did a big deep analysis and, and and evaluation of the platforms that are out there. And you know, we evaluated platforms up in Seattle, uh, ones here in in the Bay Area, uh, along with others out there. And 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 we really landed on AWS because I, I really like their serverless approach. Right? I mean. We're in the business of making people better at investing and hopefully making them more money. Um, I, I don't care what color the servers are and I don't care what load balances we're using. I ultimately care about the customer experience. So going serverless was really an approach that we wanted to take because we didn't want to care about any, you know, managing all of that and reducing the team size. And we've got a very diverse team, especially in this day and age with COVID. Um, you know, everyone's working from home. So you have to, it's a challenge sometimes to keep track of the cost and, you know, in a sort of a, a very nimble, fast, fail fast approach where you're rapidly building things, trying it, testing it, getting feedback, changing it and moving fast. It's a challenge when you've got a diverse team as to making sure you're going in the right direction. You're not ending up with uh, huge infrastructure costs with A, things left turned on, uh, B, things that are, insecure um, and, and just in general that you're just going down the wrong direction with the wrong product. So it was always a balance of that. And the one thing with um, Amplify 
that really uh, sort of ticked all the boxes for us in terms of that because I think cost is amazing with Amplify. Um, the, it is such a low cost to run. Um, as Steve talked about, you know, all of the implementation and the deployment uh, scripts, everything's done for you. So it's very quick and easy to do. And when we looked at the solution as to what we were putting together, you know, we had a we had a sort of a broad set of requirements, but we obviously wanted to get something, a POC up and running quickly. One of the key elements for us being a financial services industry is obviously security. And, and to me, that was the key deciding factor as to Amplify was that the SDKs that came out of the box for uh, integration with Cognito, which allowed us to do a lot of the identity access management side of the business in terms of giving people access, you know, a single sign on, um, uh, two factor authentication, uh, password resets, forgotten password scripts, and, and all of that that sort of came out of the box. And, and the SDKs that were underlying with that, with the CLI, it was so quick and easy for us to be, be able to get a proof of concept together with the screens that come out of the box. We actually had a POC up and running in under a week. It was probably three days by the time we'd actually got uh, uh, to the point where we had a screen that you could you know, access and uh, analyze someone's credentials and, and verify the other, who they are. And then very quickly behind that, we then started doing fedicated authentication to do the single sign-on um, and using uh, JWT authentication. And we even have some some really weird applications that we have to, we're kind of stuck with for now. We will change them over time, but for speed. So we used some escape hatches, uh, as Steve talked about, to uh, build out those things. So it was, it was really scalable, really fast at implementing, um, and, and really got us to a point of proving that Amplify was the right approach. And then behind that, you know, once we started to build on this, um, you know, for us, as we start now and we've got, uh, you know, we've got up to a thousand members that are joining the platform now. And then when we get to 10,000 and when we, you know, hopefully we, we get to the point where you, you could potentially have millions on the platform, the, this, the architecture that we've put in place today scales infinitely, right? As far as we're concerned. And, and it, the only thing that will really change is cost because the infrastructure doesn't have to, we don't have to do anything. It does it all for you. So uh, super scalable and really, you know, beneficial to us. So, for me, you know, in my role of, of sort of trying to track cost and making sure we're going down the right direction, uh, Amplify really is a no-brainer on that from a cost perspective. Uh, like I say, we were very quickly able to get something in front of people. The MVP, we got up and running inside two months once we've got Amplify in place. Um, we continue to build out. We're, we're also now, use, we use React as our major library. Uh, we're using React Native as well, and we're starting to build out more and more around React Native. On that, again, we're all, all using Amplify. Um, we use GitLab for our CDCI. So we've reduced our DevOps to the point where it almost is really sort of self-healing and self-manages itself. And we, we do very little um, of, of fixing. And, and actually, you know, if you think from a site reliability engineering point of view, we, we, we do have very little of that in terms of toil and, and actually managing that process. A lot of it now is all of it's upfront on the dev side of it and the engineering and building out new products um, on things like Sharpshooter. You know, we can turn Sharpshooter around in terms of a new product on the platform inside a week and within two days, we've got it up in Amplify. We're running it through the test scripts and we can actually start to show the, the business side of the team um, where things are and, and how it's working and work. Um, to, to everybody to agree and approve it and move on and, and push it out and go live. So join us, come and take a look at all of us financial if, you, uh, if you're an investor in the United States. Uh, we will start launching out into other countries uh, next year. We're going into Canada and, and then into Europe. Um, and again, all based on AWS. So uh, it's been great.